Hey guys, and welcome back to the observatory. Don't worry about today's camera quality. I know it sucks. It's just temporary. And the video today doesn't pertain at all to how my face looks. Uh, so we're going to get right into it. Today's video is about how to plan out a Messier marathon, as the title says. So we'll get right into it. Um, I want to show you guys the sequence that I'm planning out uh, and how I'm doing it exactly because um, it's kind of confusing on how you, would uh, you know, locate 110 different objects in the whole night sky in just one night. Uh, so uh, how I'm planning that out, uh, I want to show you guys the entire method. So the first thing uh, is that you guys go to this link. I know it's not a secure website. It's probably safe, though. I've been going on it for a little while, and it's just an old website, but it's messier.seds.org. And this website is fantastic because it shows you a list of all of these different things. If you go to their uh, homepage, it uh, probably looks like this. You just scroll down and uh, where is it? Oh, yeah. Messier Marathon Search Sequence List with Icons. Click on that guy. It takes you to this. And I just took all of these M77, M74, M33 and I brought it into an Excel document and I just listed everything out and then I gave it an object order and then I started adding in all of these different important things uh, about that ob object to observe that matter to me. Uh, the, the type of the object, the size of it, magnitude, how bright it is, uh, the height and the time that it reaches zenith uh, and then which scope am I gonna look through? Uh, should I use my Celestron Edge HD that's been set up in Hyperstar? So that's a 400 millimeter focal length. Or do I want to shoot it in narrow field? Do I want to be shooting it with 3,000 millimeters with our big 0.7 meter telescope that we have on the roof? I have the option of both, hopefully, when I'm doing this. I have my uh, date set on here to March 23rd which is the uh, new moon that we're having in March, which is generally the best time to go do a Messier marathon. You can see the most amount of objects in March. That being said, though, you can see a heck of a lot of objects still doesn't matter the time of year. Uh, usually there's more than 70 above uh, the sky any night of the year. Anyways, let's get right back to this list and how I'm doing this. So uh, once you've copied all of your objects down, you're going to start using Nina here in the Sky Atlas and the Framing Wizard to uh, help you find all of these objects. So uh, I'm going to continue off on where I'm at in my list, but you can do the same exactly for whatever object you're looking at. Uh, and so we're just going to start plugging down the list. So M87... Uh, it has uh, a bunch of information here in Nina for you that you can see here. It is a galaxy. We see the size of it is 8.7 arc minutes. We see the, um, the magnitude of the object, 8.6. We can see the transit height right here in this window. And then if we click on this line, we can actually see where it'll be at certain times. And we can find out our zenith height based on this. Uh, at 1.42 in the morning. And so I use all of this information here to figure out uh, all of these categories along here. So I start going, filling it in, galaxy, and we said it was 8.7, so we're going to round that to 9 arc minutes across, and then it's a luminosity of 8.6. It rises to 55 degrees, since it's a smaller target, it pretty much anything less than 20 arc minutes, I would rather shoot with the narrow scope uh, unless it's an open cluster. Usually open clusters, even when they're small, look good on a wide field scope. Um, globulars, depending on the size of them, they're a toss up. If you can get two globulars though in a wide field shot, that is worth it. That's a, that's a good one. Um, but galaxies, those are fun ones to shoot. Um, in in groups and so that's why i created a target uh or a category over here uh that i've labeled uh wide field combo target all that just means is if i want to combine it with another target i would list that in the notes here 
So this one we said reaches uh, zenith at 142. Remember, we did that just by clicking and dragging across that line. And then uh, that will be up all night long. So we can just type that in there. And then uh, last thing I do is I hit set for framing assistant. And we can see it actually might work with a couple of these ones here, like M86 and M84, or um, I might shoot it with M90, M89, and M58. You know, that's a that's a, a thought here. Uh, or I can shoot it all by itself in the narrow scope. So um, although this is technically a narrow field target, there's a lot of combos that I could do. So um, I might list uh, this combo here, which I think would look pretty epic if I got all four of these together. Um, so M89, this is the center object. Uh, so I would say combine with uh, M90, M58, and what is this one here? M87. M87. And then I will go and do the sem same for all of these other ones. So I will go find M87, which is this one. And I will say combine with M90, M58, and then uh, M89, M89. And now we go and we fill out the rest of these. And we, we said this one was closest to center. So I'm going to also list over here as center object. And that's a helpful little note saying that uh, M89 is the object that's closest to the center of the frame here. And so I'm adding all these little notes and uh, all of these notes here is what's going to make me a successful marathoner. I'm gonna have a much higher chance at seeing uh, 100 objects in one night if I have them all listed out beforehand. I know when they're gonna reach Zenith and uh, I know what type of object I'm looking for, where it'll be looking for it. Uh, if I'm automated and I'm doing plate solving, obviously it's gonna be super easy to do everything once it's all coded, um, but it, it either way works. Um, doing it by hand or doing it by um, automation through Nina. Uh, you'll be successful either way if you do a plan like this. So I'm going to continue entering just a little more information on these narrow and then this one. Um, let's see, what is that? Uh, 148, 1 colon 48. This will be up all night. So uh, that's exactly how I'm planning my Messier Marathon, you guys. Uh, and uh, this is how I've found is a good way to do it. I'm going to need to go in and fill in the rest of these, like uh, Zenith time here. There we go. Oh, I don't know why my mouse is being weird. But uh, yeah, uh, all of these things here, uh, you, you can go in and... and fill them in yourself uh, so you'll have a much better idea of how to handle your Messier marathon and so you can be as successful as possible because uh, this is not an easy thing to do I mean I've been doing uh, astronomy and astrophotography uh, as for three years now I've been doing it I have, haven't been live streaming it uh, until I felt like I was decent enough to put content out on the internet but uh, it, this stuff isn't easy and uh, we are do the best we can to make it easy for us because uh, we're, <laughs> we can only do so much ourselves, you know. And, and the shout out and hats off to the individuals who have done this without automation. Uh, the people who learned how to star hop their way through the, the night sky. That's amazing. And the talent that it takes to do that is uh, unbelievable. Uh, it, it's a lot of work, a lot of dedication. Uh, I'm definitely cheating in a sense uh, by some people's standards uh, for doing this Messier Marathon fully automated and uh, taking pictures of everything. But also, that's uh, the era of astronomy that I have uh, 
really enjoyed. That's what got me hooked on uh, astrophotography was seeing people pull out cameras and take pictures of things live and watching it develop. And I said, that's what I want to do. So uh, anyways, now you guys are armed with the tools on how to plan a Messier marathon. Obviously, this isn't the end of this series. Um, uh, this is just video number one in the entire series that I'm going to be putting together and uh, stay tuned for the rest of them. So uh, if you like this video, please leave a like. If you have any comments or questions, please put them down in the comments below because uh, I'm sure you guys have suggestions on how to do this better. Um, and if you're not subscribed already, make sure you are because we have a whole bunch of really cool stuff coming up here at the observatory. We're almost done with the shop and the server room. Those are coming along nicely. The telescope's almost back online. I can't wait to get videos going about that again. We did a whole bunch of maintenance on it, which I filmed a bunch of it, but I just need to get it edited. Uh, but I can't wait to put that stuff out you guys it's going to be coming very soon uh, and as we work our way into spring and summer the nights will get shorter but uh, clearer and we'll be able to be shooting a heck of a lot more I can't wait to do a lot more live streams with you guys so thank you so much for watching today's video and uh, I hope you learned something and I will see you guys in the next one peace